This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while in their joy. They were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, These are my words, that I spoke with you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. I bring you greetings this morning from our Bishop Tim Smith in the office of the Bishop of the North Carolina Synod. We're so excited today to rejoice with you as we install your senior pastor, Daniel. And we're so grateful for the ministry your congregation does and the ways we partner together. Synod means walking together and we couldn't do it without you and we're so thankful for the abundant ministry that you provide for your community and the wider church. So today we get another post-Easter story about Jesus risen from the dead and I think that all post-Easter stories point us to this fact that the God who raised Jesus from the dead promises to be with us in our very real lives. Luke's gospel, more than any other, has post-resurrection accounts of Jesus. There are six of them, and our story today picks up right after the Road to Emmaus story, if you know that, where Jesus is walking on the road with his disciples, and they don't know it's him. But then they break the bread, and Jesus reveals himself to his disciples. So then we're right after the Road to Emmaus today. And the disciples, it's almost like they missed the memo. They're confused, scared, and grieving. They've kind of lost their sense of self and identity. They're sad, they're scared, they're doubting. There's a little joy too, but maybe they're even thinking about picking up their lives before they left to follow Jesus three years ago and going back to the families they left. There are a lot of feelings in that room. And then, in all the feelings that they're feeling, Jesus shows up and Jesus tells him, hey, don't be afraid and peace be with you. And Jesus shows up with the very real feelings in that room of confusion, awe, and fear. And instead of being like mad or irritated that these disciples who have been following him around for a while don't get it, Jesus meets them where they are in all their very real feelings. He understands and accepts that this is where they are. He's patient with them and shows them his wounds and offers to eat a meal with them and explains that he's not a ghost, but that he is really risen and present with them. Jesus understands and accepts all of the feelings the disciples have 
and meets them where they are in that room saying, peace be with you. What I think is so important about that phrase, peace be with you, is something I learned from a colleague this week. We always think of peace in the Bible as a ceasefire, an end to war, an end to kids fighting in the back seat, an end to conflict. But this kind of peace we're translating here, the word is more like presence. So here, in this room with all these feelings that the disciples are having, Jesus is saying, my presence be with you. My presence be with you. And those disciples and all their feelings, my presence be with you in your joy. My presence be with you in your grief. My presence be with you in your doubt. My presence be with you in your fear. The stories of the risen Jesus teach us that the God who raised Jesus from the dead promises to be with us in our very real lives. And here, Jesus is modeling that in the ways that he shows up with those disciples in their very real lives, with their very real feelings. And he's teaching them not to be afraid. He's having patience with them in their confusion and doubt. And he shows them that he really cares and really is present by meeting them where they are, sitting down and having breakfast with them. Jesus joins them. Those disciples who he loves, who have been following him for three years in their real lives with their real feelings. He's not disappointed by their reaction. It's almost like he expected it. And he's patient and kind and he shows up and meets them right where they are. Just as the God who raised Jesus from the dead showed up and was present with those disciples after the resurrection. I think if we pause and really think about it, we might find that the same God who raised Jesus from the dead shows up and is present in our own very real lives with our own very real feelings. And I'm going to tell you about a way that God showed up in my own life. So I moved to Holly Springs, North Carolina in 2003, and I was about to start middle school. And I moved here and I, I just never fit in. I just never hit my stride. I never found that community where I felt like I could really be myself. And I always felt really alone. And like I never really fit in. And I had a pretty hard and difficult home life, which made making friends even harder. I didn't have the clothes. I wasn't available to hang out after school. And so making friends and finding community in middle and high school was extremely difficult for me. The summer after my senior year of high school, I got my first job. I was washing dishes and pulling weeds and leading crafts and activities on support staff at Camp Agape. I was 17 years old and doing a lot of hard manual labor, but the job wasn't what was so profound about this experience. It was the people, the community that I made there. They changed my life. And if you've never been to Camp Agape, they have a rich tradition uh, and they call it affirmation. It's a part of the culture. It's a core value of that ministry. And every Thursday night, all the campers and the staff gather at the Lakeside Chapel and the counselors take their individual campers one by one. They sit down with them and they share the gifts that they saw in that camper and individual that week. 
And if you didn't know, it happens for the staff too. We don't usually do the candle thing, but Randy or someone on staff would go around and individually whisper affirmations to all of the staff who worked that week. And for someone who grew up in a house like mine that was extremely difficult and kind words were hard to find, those words of affirmation were the presence of the risen Christ for me. They changed my life and made such a difference. And you're probably thinking, okay, you worked at camp. That's really great. You had a great experience while you were there. But I have to tell you, where the risen Christ really showed up for me in that community came almost a decade after I worked on camp. In 2020, before the pandemic, my whole life kind of just fell apart. My always dysfunctional family situation became more severe and I began to raise my 16 year old sister. At 26 years old, I became a parent and my whole life changed and it was really hard. And I had a really hard time and I was serving as a pastor. I had lots of friends, but a lot of people in my life just really didn't get it and didn't know how to be there for me. But it was that same community of staff that I worked with at Camp Agape that was present with me through silly text messages, cards, and showing up, who showed me the presence of the risen Christ in the most difficult time of my own life. The presence of Christ was there in a community that loved me and supported me through a really difficult time. Today we get a story about how the post-Easter Jesus shows up to a room full of weary, broken disciples saying, Peace be with you. My presence be with you. My presence be with you today in your life, in your joy, in your pain, in your hope, in your own doubt. May you find the ways that the God who raised Jesus from the dead shows up in your real life with your own real feelings in the big ways and in the simple ones. And may you never forget the gift of love that that presence is, that Jesus not only shows up with us in our real lives, but that Jesus also chooses each and every one of us, just as God made us and commissions us to declare the power and presence of God in the midst of tragedy, despair, death, and joy. That Jesus commissions us to practice resurrection, to believe and have hope that the worst thing is never the last thing. The risen Christ himself makes known to us in our lives in ways that are large and small. And as people of faith, we're called to be witnesses to that presence. But not only that, we might even be called to be the presence of the risen Christ in the lives of the people we love. I hope that as you continue in this Easter season and you continue on the journeys of your own daily lives, that you remember that the God who raised Christ Jesus from the dead promises to be there in our very real lives, to show up with our very real feelings and that God will never leave us even in the hardest seasons of our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.